The first and foremost is a word called Allah. Why do Muslims say Allah? Why don't they say God like normal people? Well, I got news for those who think that all, all the Christians say God. It's not true. In fact, many, many Christians say the word Dios because there are so many Spanish-speaking Christians in the world. Many of the Christians are Catholics. South America, Central America, in Mexico, for example, they speak Spanish or Portuguese. If you go to Portugal, of course, Spain, Italy, France, what, do, what are they speaking? What are their languages? Do they say God? No. Go to Europe, go to Germany, go to Czechoslovakia, go to some of the other countries. Christians there also don't say God. They have different words for God. Is that true? But every single Muslim on earth uses the word Allah. Do you know that? Every single Muslim on earth, 1.5 billion, all agree. That's what we call Allah. And, by the way, all of the Arab Christians also use the word Allah. And the Arab Jews as well. The word Allah is in the Arabic Old Testament, page 1, 17 times. And the word Allah is in the New Testament, Alif Lam Lam Ha. So for the benefit of those who think that there's something wrong with using Allah, it was used before there was the word God. The word God didn't exist even a thousand years ago because there was no English until the Normans invaded the Saxons in 1066 AD. What did they call him before that? The word Allah means, let's find out the meaning. It comes from the root Elah. Elah means anything which is worshipped. A rock, a stick, a stone, a bone can be worshipped, right? And you can say Alilah, which means the God, still doesn't bring it to the level of the God as in Allah. In English, you have to see it written down because it's the same word. You have to see the big G or the little G or you didn't know. For the plural in Arabic, gods, Aliha, and this is the plural. English just puts after anything in English, you got the plural. Gods, right? But when you say Allah, it cannot be made plural and it cannot have gender. Even though it says he, huwa, in the Arabic, and even though it says we in the Arabic, nahnu, it's only out of respect and out of royalty, never out of plural and never out of gender. God is not a man, God is not a woman, and he doesn't compare to his creation. And he said, Lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yukuluhu kufu wanahad. He's not the son of anything, he's not the father of anything, he doesn't compare to anything, there's nothing compares to him, and he's a had one, unique not like anything else. Is that right? Amazing, huh? What's really amazing is that I found a similar verse in the Old Testament in the book called Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should sin. And God's not the son of man that he should repent. So there we go. We have some things right there that amazingly we're a lot closer maybe than we think.